Now, for youth ministry, in any ministry, one very, two elements very important are first, relationship with God, build up the relationship with God, and the other is personal care. And for youth, this is particularly important because youth um, have more emotional problems. The reason is because they are in an age of struggling. They are struggling through their identity, uh, who they are, what they can become, and also go through the study and the work, job, uh, dating, marriage, and all this. So, uh, and you notice that when kids go to school, it's always about popularity. Uh, if if this represents a Christian, and everyone speak against the Christian, your Christian, they laugh at him. It's very hard for this Christian to stay as a Christian, unless if this person has very strong faith. Because when everyone doesn't like him, or say, oh, you're a Christian, I don't play with you, then it's very, very difficult. Because uh, as a youngster, it's very important to have friendship. They, they, their importance is in friendship. Their importance is in being accepted by people. This is very, very important. So when doing youth ministry, first we care about them. But we cannot do all the work. So we have to train them to care for each other. So caring is very important. Listening and not just teaching. Again, it's like counseling, not just teaching. Because teaching people won't be able to accept uh, all the time. A little teaching is okay, but not all the time. We have to listen and then and then think with the person. If the person has this problem, we'll say, how does it affect you? And what are you trying, how are you trying to solve the problem? Has it been effective? What are the results? And what have you found effective? What have you found ineffective? So, guiding them to think through the problems. So, so that when people uh, are guided and accepted, when they feel accepted, even when they fail, they feel accepted, then it's very important. That way, uh, that way they will have a sense of belonging. Sense of belonging is very important. Sense of belonging is not only with the leaders, but also with the whole group. That they feel accepted by the whole group. So there need to be a, an atmosphere of acceptance. The way of behavior in the school and in the place of work has to be changed because in a place of work or in a in a school, people like to tease at other people. Uh, I like to ask you: in this country, do people tease at each other? The young people? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is a way of life. But as Christian, this is something need to be taught. That was we need to say when we tease at other people. Uh, it will hurt the person and will cause the person to stumble and then the person could you know fall away from Jesus mm -hmm. and then Jesus said if you cause the little ones to stumble it's better to tie a rock to you and then dump you in the ocean and let you die like that and so they need to learn that and need to learn the way of communication now if you remember I, uh, or maybe I, I, I don't know if I have talked to you about the words of grace now, words of grace from God and also words of grace we say to people that you're precious, you're important, God loves you, I love you. And also with the law, there are different ways of speaking the law. There's guidance. Guidance. There is teaching. There is command. Do this. And now guidance is, I just said already, how to guide a person. And uh, teaching will be telling them what to do. And command is do it now. And then there is condemnation. You didn't do it. Uh, uh, and then saying you are no good. You have no love. Now be aware that even when we use the law, we have to use it in a positive way. Avoid using condemnation. For instance, don't say, why are you late today? Even though the person is late, the way we communicate this will make the person feel hurt and he won't come back again. We care about the person and talk to the person individually and, and realize oh, where do you live, how far does it take for you to come. Uh, uh, 
so what what can you do that you can come early? So talk, discuss with the person so the person doesn't feel bad. So be aware of word of grace and word of the law and how to use it. Not only you know it, that you teach the whole group to, to know it. And if this becomes your habit, that you speak words of grace all the time, then you have good friends. Yes. And in the future, when you get married, you have good marriage. But let me tell you, many Christian couples or even ministers couple don't haven't learned to speak words of grace to their couple, to their husband and wife. That many times they get angry, they get frustrated. Ah, I'm fed up with you. I cannot take you anymore. So it doesn't help, right? So we need to learn to use words of grace and say, how can we overcome this problem? How can we solve this problem? To discuss it with the person instead of condemning. Um, also, youth need participation. Actually, anyone in the church needs partic participation. And youth need that more. When you can do it with them, pray for each other, train them to pray for each other, and then they find that they have power, and then tell them to pray for their friends. Because the youth have more opportunity to reach out than adults. And then, when they can, when they pray for someone, they come back to share with you. Then you appreciate a person and praise, you know, praise a person in public. And ask the person to share. He has prayed for someone, even though the person hasn't turned to Jesus. It's okay. He has prayed for someone, and the person has experienced the Holy Spirit, or the person hasn't experienced the Holy Spirit. Let the person share and say, this is a great example. He's serving God, even though there is no result at this point. God is pleased with him. Always say positive things. God is pleased with what he has done. And then when people do that, because youth want a sense of accomplishment. When they can pray for someone, and then they can bring someone back and ask them how they did it, how they did it, how they bring the person. And I appreciate them, and I also pay attention to the youth when they come. So a sense of accomplishment is very important. Now with youth, it's also very easy to have sexual problems. Uh, so that need to be taught. That need to be taught in a positive way. Not just saying, don't have sex, don't do this, don't do that. But tell them, your life is very precious. Use grace, teach grace. You know, always say, God loves you very much. God cares about you. Your life is very precious. You can do great things for God. Do you want to do great things for God? Do you want your life to blossom and go better and better? That you'll be blessed in every area in your life. So guide them to think that way. And then, um, and then tell them, if you want to be blessed by God, what should we do? What do we have to do? So use question method. So in youth Worship is better to have two-way communications message. Ask question, let them respond. Get get them used to this. This to ask them question and let them respond. That way, there's participation and also get them to say to each other, "You are loved by God. You are precious. You are important." And then guide them to think: If you want to be used by God, so how should you? You know, choose a lot of things. How you use money, you buy things. How you study, how you work, how you see the opposite sex. That use illustration. In teaching youth, we have to use illustration. Mm -hmm. If someone who is very smart, do very well in school, and, 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 and love the Lord and pray a lot, but then when he sees a girl, he's attracted, he cannot do anything, he's just attracted and he, is, he, is, he wants to hug the girl, kiss the girl, he wants to touch a girl, he wants to have sex. Now be frank, be honest, be direct when you talk about that. But some churches say, I cannot talk about having sex. But when you don't talk about it, they will do it. Yeah. We have to tell them, this is, will destroy your life. Yeah. Even though you have one time seem to be fun, but it would destroy your life and the other person's life. You would destroy the person's life to the utmost.
because that person will be destroyed by you. The person will feel that she has no value. If she's pregnant and you cannot get married, then if you get married, you're forced to get married. If you cannot get married, that person has the problem of how to handle the, the baby. And you destroy her life and you destroy your life. And you are not pleasing to God and your whole life is destroyed. So do you want to do that? So teach them these values that important thing is your life is precious so you want to make the best use of your life so if you want to make the best use of your life you want to follow God totally and love God all the time and then you have a good relationship with God and then your life will blossom and you'll be blessed by God in every area even in difficulties God can open ways for you so every value you have to teach every practical thing you have to teach by letting them know the love of God always in this message actually even to youth and to adults always back it up with love because of the love of God we don't want to waste our life because of the love of God our life can go so high our life can be used by God because of the love of God I want to, don't want to waste my life that that way they they feel important and that way they the life can be used by God so we have to watch out for this problem and also there are youth that come into the youth group just to get girls. Now usually girls are not so active to chase after men. I don't know in your culture, is that true? Yeah. In many cultures that's true. Yeah. But men can get into a youth group to get women. So if there are people like that, you have to watch. You have to watch and then if they are always going after the girls, you have to talk with them. If you lose that person, it's better to lose that person than to lose many other girls. And to destroy the, the morality of the, of the group. So we have to, uh, to, uh, to be aware of that. And also, it's best to tell them it's good to have dating counseling. But they say, dating is my private thing, I don't want to tell you. We don't want them to tell us everything, but we want to tell, help them with their, date, their interaction. Uh, we have to do counseling with that interaction. Um, but let them know, as Christians when we date, we have the intention of getting married and find out if this person is suitable. If the person is not suitable, then we want to part in a loving way. If the person is God's preparation, we want to follow God's plan so that we will, the whole process we're glorifying God, that we're not sinning. Some people it's like this. They go to church and then they date and then they have sex or they kiss. Actually, I want to teach people this. Any kind of body contact that causes them to have sexual arousal is sinning. Yes. Any kind of body contact that causes them to have sexual arousal is sin. Yes. It will, for sure, it will lead to sexual relationships. Yes. So we have to tell them that. And I tell people, the best is that you only hold hands. Only one thing you do is hold hands. Nothing more. If they're willing, that's best. But sometimes people want to, always want to try to do something more. And they want to do something more and then they, they, they go for the next. Because they hug and then they got excited. And then they start to kiss. And then when they start to kiss, they want to fondle, touch. And then it will keep going. So just start, just keep minimum. Or even not hold hands. If they're willing, yeah. the best is not even to hold hands. Um, so to have dating counseling, premarital counseling, and also marriage counseling, helping them in the whole process. And you'll find that when you counsel them, many of them, uh, the, the guys say, oh, no problem, no problem. And the girls say, there's always problem. <laughs> because the girls will notice how the guy didn't respond to me, didn't talk to me, they, uh, didn't answer my question. And the guys say, this is nothing. You know, not talking is nothing, but girls always see this as a problem because girls, God put girls, women in a relationship to encourage men to, dis, to, uh, to communicate, to talk, to open ourselves. God used girls because women pay attention to relationship and men pay attention to accomplishment. We can have both, so one have one and the other one the other one. When you get married, you have both. 
then you work on relationship, and then you also work on accomplishment. Okay. So now, for youth group to grow, also cell group ministry is another possibility. Uh, cell group ministry, but this is something it takes a lot of training to be a good cell group leaders because cell group leaders are like ministers. It's very uh, sometimes it can be very tiring. But cell group ministry also has another danger. The danger is if the leaders are not faithful to the church, they can take the people away. But all the growing church in the world have cell groups. That's one way that can have much growth. So we need to teach faithfulness to the church. Now how do you teach faithfulness to the church? First, the church needs to have a goal, a direction that people can buy and follow. The church has to have a direction that this church emphasizes on caring about people, emphasize on relationship with God, infilling the Holy Spirit, evangelism, mission work, and whatever it is that you have emphasized on, and you say, this is the goal of this church. You see that this can bless the world. Do you want to follow this church direction? So it's very important that the church want to attract people. The church has to have good biblical direction and have direction that can motivate people, encourage people, that people enjoy coming to the church that people feel loved and cared for when they come to the church. That will attract people. If people don't care about people, the church will not keep people. Yeah. But it's not just the pastor caring, it's yes. everyone yes. caring. The whole atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So in a youth group, if everyone cares for each other, that way the church can grow.